Good evening. In tonight's feature, we take you into the mind of a handsome young man, desperate to cling to youth and his beauty, but will it be at the cost of his own soul? We hope you enjoy this production of The Picture of Dorian Gray. Gray is about art, morals, and a lot about how ourselves as humans can destroy ourselves because we focus so much on power, on beauty, on being selfish, and a lot on art. The picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde is about a boy once full of innocence and with the help of his friend, Lord Henry Wotton, he becomes full of corruption. Dorian is obsessed with his own beauty, and he gets his portrait painted, and that's just the beginning of the end. And today, we have the poet and dramatist, Oscar Wilde. How are you today, Mr. Wilde? I'm fabulous. Thank you for asking. So, you were born on October 16, 1854, in Dublin, Ireland? That is correct. And you died on November 30th, 1900, in Paris, France? I believe so. Oh, that's what the bright light was. Uh, anyway, your father was Sir William Wilde, Ireland's leading ear and eye surgeon, who also published books. What else can you tell me about him? Uh, he was all right, I guess. My mother was a revolutionary poet. I like her far more better. While you attended college in Oxford, you won the Nudescape Prize in 1878 with what poem? Ravenna. Hmm. You were a spokesman then in the late 19th century, yes? Yes, it was an aesthetic movement. We advocated art for art's sake. Hmm. Very nice. And can you tell us about your time in prison? You were the object of celebrated civil and criminal suits involving homosexuality. Um, I have a wife. Uh, th that wasn't my question. His name was Lord Alfred Douglas, and he was beautiful. I loved him dearly. My friends argued me to flee to France. I refused. I couldn't be far from him, my dear Alfred. And his father? His father made it sure to have me arrested. Um, okay. Moving on. What have you written during your time of, well... Uh, of being alive. Uh, would you mind moving the paper for me? My hands, I, I can't find them. <laughs> you can edit that part out. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Thank you. Picture of Dorian Gray. It's very gay. Um, Lady Windermere's fan. The importance of being earnest and lots and lots and lots and lots of poetry. You? I thought I'd put you in jail. Stay away from my son. to you, Henry, for an update on Basil Hallward's whereabouts. Scotland Yard still insists that the man in the gray Ulster who left for Paris by the midnight train on the 9th of November was Basil. The French police declare that Basil never arrived in Paris at all, though. 
We will have more updates on the disappearance of Basil Halliward when new information comes in. Thank you. What you just watched was an interview with the dead Oscar Wilde. Um, thank you, Miss Kyle. So Oscar Wilde was born in Dublin, Ireland, and he died in Paris, France. He wrote The Picture of Dorian Gray, The Happy Prince, The Canterville Ghost, The Selfish Giant, De Profundis, The Nightingale and the Rose, The Ballad of Reading Gale, The Decay of Living, Lady Windermere's Fan, and The Importance of Being Earnest, and lots of poetry and a lot more essays and everything like that. He married Constance Lloyd and had two children, Cyril Holland and Vivian Holland, both boys. He attended Magdalen College in Trinity College, Dublin. Um, Oscar Wilde advocated a lot for art. Um, his father was an ear and eye surgeon. He wrote archaeology, folklore, and satire. His mother wrote poetry and, under the name Speranza. He lectured a lot in the United States and Canada. Oscar Wilde had a very close friendship with Sir Lord Alfred Douglas. Alfred Douglas's father did not like that, and he accused him of being gay, and Oscar Wilde sued him for that, and when the evidence went against him, he dropped the trial, and the case was dropped anyways. Oscar Wilde's friends urged him to flee to France. After the evidence was put against him, he refused, and then he was arrested. When they went to trial, the first one, the jury came to a verdict. Um, when he first went to trial, the jury was unable to declare a verdict, so the second time he was accused of being guilty, and he was put in jail. He wrote a lot of letters to Alfred Douglas while the time he was in jail. Don't know if Alfred Douglas ever replied to him or wrote him any letters back. I believe that it distracted him from his work. When he was in, by the time that he was in jail, his children decided to change their last names, so they were they weren't involved in whatever was going on with Oscar Wilde at the time. So they changed their last name to Holland. Then Oscar Wilde later died from meningitis. It is only the sacred things that are worth touching, Dorian. Hey, everybody. Today, we've brought in another special guest, the infamous Voldemort from the Harry Potter world. <laughs> you have read Oscar Wilde's The Picture of Dorian Gray. Uh, what did you think of it? <sighs> Yeah, the inferior muggle got his hands on a magic painting I heard. It was a subpar story. It was, it was okay though. It reminded me of my own humble beginnings. I see. Um, I was just about to touch on that. Uh, Dorian slowly becomes a figure of evil throughout the book. Uh, as an evil character yourself, uh, do you relate to him? There's no good and evil. There's power in those too weak to seek it. I see. <clears throat> yes, but uh, what was your impression of Dorian's character? Well, if I had that much money to start with, I can make bad things happen to people who are mean to me. I can make them hurt if I want. Indeed. Uh, I understand that in your teenage years, you were considered quite attractive. Uh, Dorian didn't change his name like you, but he was also a very beautiful man. Uh, he only turned ugly on the inside after his friend Lord Henry introduced him to his own beauty. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? First of all, Voldemort is my past, present, and future. Like a fool, I carry that name Tom Riddle around. <laughs> and as for beauty, Potter. Him and his goons? Of course I was the best wizard around. Come on now. Come on. As for desires, I didn't need anyone to activate my, my inner ambitions for power. Well, beyond my imaginations. You think those poor muggles could do anything? All I needed was a couple years of schooling at Dumbledore's Hogwarts. <laughs> uh, we should wrap this up soon. Uh, any last words on Dorian Gray? 
I'm gonna kill you, Harry Potter. I wanna, I wanna destroy you. I wanna look in your eyes when I kill you. I wanna see the light fade from your eyes. Never. <laughs> All right, so what you just watched was an interview with uh, Lord Voldemort. Uh, and um, sort of just to encapsulate the whole message of our little interview there, uh, basically the picture of Dorian Gray uh, connects with Voldemort's story because um, Dorian Gray and Voldemort both started from pretty humble beginnings and they both had like similar uh, styles of beauty and everyone admired them and stuff like that. Uh, but as uh, both boys like grew up, they were influenced in um, Lord Voldemort's case, it's Dumbledore, but in Dorian's case, it's Lord Henry, but they're both influenced by somebody outside and um, it kind of twisted their thoughts and their moral thinking. And so that's what the whole story of uh, Dorian Gray is about. It's about Dorian Gray's like fall, right? His moral twistedness. And Lord Voldemort's story is kind of like that too. Like it's, it's about him being obsessed with power, being obsessed with uh, dark magic. And Dorian uh, is obsessed with um, his uh, living his life like a work of art instead of coming to terms with the reality of his life and that he will have to bear consequences for whatever sins that he chooses to commit. And they both also um, kind of have a little following almost, like uh, Lord Voldemort obviously had the Death Eaters uh, and Dorian Gray had um, a group of friends who he influenced and um, kind of did drugs with and uh, yeah engaged in suspicious activities in and um, that's about mostly the connections between the two worlds and I would say Lord Voldemort is also maybe not as worse as Dorian Gray because uh, he knew that he was pursuing dark magic but he thought he was doing it for the good of the wizardry world, right? He actually had a reasoning behind getting rid of the muggles even though it wasn't a good reasoning. But Dorian had no reason to ruin his life and everyone's around him their lives. So I guess Dorian is a little bit worse than Voldemort in some aspects, but um, on that note, let's end. What if I killed him? It's not in you, Dorian, to commit murder. Themes in the picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde are heavily directed toward morality and the romanticism of life. Through a light reading, it is easy to ascertain that while crafts a theme that separates morality from being exclusive to those possessing beauty and social rank, evidence from the degradation of Dorian's character, someone representing the height of both characteristics. Furthermore, cited in the preface of the novel, Wilde states, It is the spectator and not life that art really mirrors, and that no artist has ethical sympathies. In the novel, Dorian is indoctrinated to romanticize and idealize his life. In other words, Dorian becomes the artist of his life as he aims to capture all in perfection. However, bearing Wilde's wisdom in the preface in mind, Dorian is also the spectator to his own art, the life of an artist who has cast morality aside. As a spectator, Dorian struggles between both seeing his own face in the glass and not seeing his own face in the glass, as he falls into a sinner's demise representing his inability to know even himself now all furthering Wilde's theme of the danger of adopting a principle of only romanticism and idealization while the realism of life and its moral crossroads are simply cast aside. <laughs> okay, okay. I need to get down on the stool. <laughs> Green
Gray by Oscar Wilde is that the main character during Gray decides to run away from his problem instead of confronting them. The longer he hides from them, the more crime, the more corruption he does instead of fixing the main source. He decides to hide the painting that his friend Basil painted for him in a private room where no one can access except for him. Um, the painting represents the evil of himself in a physical way so he can see what his soul looks like. And another problem I have is that he believes everything in the beginning. Like, for example, Lord Henry, his best friend of the novel, he manipulates Dorian Gray into thinking of a different way because in the beginning, when we first meet Dorian Gray, he was a naive, innocent person, but later on he becomes more corrupted and is more um, disrupted. <laughs> um, the book becomes a problem of Oscar Wires because he becomes the victim of the book because like there was a case of him done because he was like gay and it was like very sexual for the time period it was released and he then was convicted into jail and then later on died in a young age. So I think that's all my concerns. <laughs>